Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 18, Command Line Argument Parsing. Today I will only focus on two of the available libraries out there. One from Python's standard library called ArcParse, and another one is a crate for Rust called Structopt, which is a very clever way of defining your options that you want to parse from your argument list. Let's hop over to the code to see how this all works. As usual, on the left here, we have our Python code. On the right, we'll have the Rust. In Python, at the beginning, we will use argparse from the standard library. Since I want to demonstrate how to use an enum for your argument parsing, I also import the enum module. Below here, we actually then define our enum. So it's multiple categories that we want to be able to distinguish. It's uh, science, people, and uh, comedy. Below here, since we want to be able to use a string coming in from the arguments and convert this back into a category, we will also have to limit the user in which strings they are allowed to use, right? Therefore, we build these valid categories, which is the name found for every category. Once uh, we have built this, we can actually now start setting up our argument parser. So we use the arc parse modules argument parser class. We pass it a custom option that is a fairly good one because the argument default, what argument defaults help formatter, <laughs> will show uh, the default values of your arguments. This is very helpful once uh, users are using your application. They can see the default values in the help output and this might give them more insight in how to use your arguments. Setting up a argument is fairly easy. We use this add argument method, then we pass it the argument name that we want. Here I chose the long form of file. I require it, so require this true, and I put the help text that explains what this file argument is supposed to mean. Since this was lifted off of a small application that would upload video files to YouTube, these uh, help texts would often reference videos, so video file to upload in this example. Then, since we are uploading to YouTube, right, we want to have a title for the video. This is then this uh, title argument. Now we get to our enum. We use a category as an argument and the choices that are available to the user and can also be shown to the user will be our list of uh, strings that we generated from our enum. Then we have a default value. So if the, if the person omits setting a category, this will be set to science. And also we add a help text as always. Next one is just a flag. A classic would be um, verbose. So showing more or less output in your application. All we have to do is store true or false, because all we care about is, is this activated or is it not? In uh, this case, you should use then this action store true option. This will then only give you a true or false value in Python. And another thing that is very helpful is repeating the same argument, but all these values end up in a single list of strings. So in this case, for example, we use a name in the short form here, just n, and in the long form, it's a name. And this will then be stored in an attribute called names, plural. We call the action append. So this will then, if we multiple times use a dash n, append to a list, the argument given. And uh, the help text will be just uh, and we also give a help text as in the other options. Now we run our parser that we set up with the parse args method. And this will then create a new instance of a class that will then hold all those arguments that we created. So if we were to use here the word verbose and the category, for example, it automatically takes that and uh, uses this as a property name, therefore, the args category holds our category long form here. And in order to set this up as an enum, so we want to have an enum variant as the value and not a string, 
we will now use uh, the categories get item magic function and the string that we parsed from the argument parser as an input. This way we force this to be a category enum and at the end we print the arguments that we parsed. Let's run this. I think uh, once this has been shown in in use, this will be a bit more clear of what's uh, happening. So we are in Python. We run Python arc p. If we don't uh, provide anything, as you can see, this will show you only the short usage form, no detailed information, and since we haven't provided the required uh, file argument, it will help you and tell you that you should uh, do that. If you want to see more details, we can. All we have to do is use uh, the help, which is auto-implemented for you. And now we see all the additional information, for example, the help text that we provided in our setup and of course the default values that would be given. The only uh, useful one that we set is for the category and the default would be science, as you can see here. Let's play a bit uh, with the, the options that we have. So we can actually provide a file and we can provide a title and maybe also a category and this time we choose uh, people. We, and when we run this, all our program does is just uh, echo back to us our argument struct. Now the file is set to the file that we have given the title is set correctly, the categories is set to people, which is the actual enum value and not just a string, and the rest is set up to the default values. Now let's quickly see if our names thing works correctly. So we add on top some uh, names, so let's use the long form for name 1 and the short form for name 2. And we can see that this one works fine too. We now end up with a list of values in our names, because here we call the destination names, right? In our names attribute. All of this can be done in Rust as well and fairly easy as you will soon see. Let's jump to the Rust code. What we do in Rust is we use this uh, struct opt creates struct opt proc macro that we use down here, you can see in the, the derive for our options struct. Then this is a very powerful thing that you should look into is the strum crate. This one offers you powerful options to interact with your enums. So you can parse them from string into an enum or get the other way around. This is a very cool Library, you should definitely look into this if you want to have uh, ease of use with your enumerations. Now, what we use here is the variant names uh, trait. This one will offer you the traits necessary to do the conversion. And then we use the macros enum string and enum variant names. Down here in our definition of the enum categories, we do the same as we did here in Python, right? But up here we use enum variant names. This will create us a static vector of static strings of all possible variant names in our enum. So this proc macro will inspect the enum, find the names uh, science, people, and comedy, and put them in a vector of strings. So this enum variant names automatically writes this code for you, but in Rust, of course. And this gets compiled on top. And we get to use it, which you can see down here, with the all capital variants. Then enum string. This automatically sets up everything necessary to convert the category from a string into this enum. And this way you can actually have the user type in a string in, as an argument, but you end up with a correct enum in your options struct. And on top of this, they provide uh, the way for you, a way for you to change automatically how those names have to be written. 
you might not want to have to remember that science has a capital S and people has a capital P. You can use the kebab case. This will automatically make it a lowercase. And if you have combined long words, use the underscore for separation. This way you can follow the Rust suggested uh, naming scheme, but also use easily the in and output as a human with uh, strings. Let's compare the code between uh, the struct up setup and our Python code. For this, I will also scroll down to show all of the Rust code. This is just two lines, but still helpful, two lines. Now in Python, we set up the argument parser. This uh, equivalent would be here using the struct opt proc macro in the derive. The debug we use to then be able to print easily the whole options struct. Here struct opt allows you to give your application a custom name and a custom about text, which will then show up in the help of your application. Then we define a struct called options. So this is basically already what is coming out here at the end of this parse arcs. We are defining here the options that we want. This is then at the end, the thing that you will pass around in your application to know which options were set. And what we do in Rust as always is we provide an attribute and a data type. And once we have done that, we will document it. So this documentation line will end up in your nicely formatted HTML documentation generated by cargo doc. And the smart struct opt create will take this documentation string as the help string for your output in the argument parser. So what is written here in the help is actually the documentation string that you write anyways to document your source code. Then you have those uh, extra struct op options. And here I only chose to give short and long names for the argument. It automatically takes the name of the property. So in this case, file and creates a dash dash file. So this one and the short option automatically will be dash the first letter F in this case. This uh, structure follows further down, right? So we have a comment again for our title. And this then again is the help text is the comment, title is uh, this uh, name. We also use short and long names. And in order to make title optional, we have to define it optional in Rust as the Rust uh, code definition. So we have an optional string that uh, will define the title of our video. Now we come to the more complicated example of our enum. Again, we use a video category, the help string, as we did here. Then the property name is category and the type is the enum. Since we did not use option, this is mandatory, but we can define a default value. This is the same as here, default value. And the choices is called the passable values in struct.opt. And here we can pass the categories variants that we generated with the enum, enum variant names. So this matches the setting on the left side. And here we only choose to use the long option name. We do not use the short one. Further down, the verbose example. So here we have to give a data type of a Boolean because we only care about this as a flag. We only want to have true or false. And we also use short and long name, and you know already that this is the help text. And further down, you can give custom short and long names. So if you use short equals your short uh, name, then you end up with n and long name. Here the same trick, we have those two options. Here we have to provide the destination called the names, because if it would derive from this one, it will be called name, right? And here we do it the other way around. We do customize the long name and we give it the correct destination name in the struct as we define it. Then we define uh, this to be a vector of strings. This already tells the struct opt proc macro, I'll accept this argument multiple times. And if it uh, happens to be set multiple times, append it to this one vector. This makes 
this very cool because if you already have code that has a struct options, but you have not yet implemented argument parsing, all you have to do is add uh, these uh, syntax sugar things because well documentation you already had from the start normally. You add those struct opt commands and you derive from struct opt and you already have a full on argument parser and you don't have to think too much about anything. In your application, so in the main function, you would then call your options struct from args. So this function will be implemented by struct opt for you as uh, the proc macro creates this code for you. Then you end up with an initialized options struct with all the properties that we've defined. And here we print this. Let's see if this actually works as intended. So we hop over to the Rust code. We can cargo run this example. And as we had in Python, the short form will complain that we should use a file and usage will be only a short minimal usage of the stuff that we have to provide. And if we use help, this will give us more. Let's try to use help. Here we run into a problem because now we actually see the help of cargo run and not the help of our application. What we have to do to pull this off is we have to add two more dashes. So you can see down here, I have now typed those two more dashes. So if before the help was run for cargo run. And those two dashes tell cargo run, oops, stop parsing arguments and every argument coming above after those double dashes will be passed to the binary that it is running. And this actually works as you can see. We now have our output. So this is our text that describes the application. So name and about. Then the usage is becoming a detailed and it will also show us the, the default value if we have given some. And you can see the possible values that are available to put in category. And here you can see that we can use uh, multiple names. Now let's try to actually do that. I will clear the screen. And instead of help, we will provide a file as we did before, bob.mp4, for example, then a title test and category. Um, people. And what happened is we end up with the file Bob. We have an optional title. So now we have some test. This is Rust, right? It, since it's optional, it would be none if we haven't provided anything or some and then the string. The category is correctly already the categories enum because it's parsed directly into the correct data type and verbose is a boolean and names is an empty vector because we haven't provided any. If we now replace the category with uh, name one and two, we can see that this vector thing works as well. And the long and the short form works and the default category science is being parsed as well from the default value that we provided here. As you can see, command line parsing is very easy to use and mature in both languages. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Coming up next at the From Python to Rust series will be NumPy with a little bit of linear algebra.